Too much studying and not enough sleep was making me feel like a zombie. Chocolate would help, right? So I drowsily walked downstairs. Huh? Why was my whole family there with their suitcases? Um, are you guys going somewhere? Yes, Colorado for a ski trip. (gasps) That's awesome! You're the best, Daddy! Not you, Helen. You have studying to do. And this is a special award for Christine for winning her scholarship. What? So you're just going to leave me out because of some meaningless grades? This is so unfair. Ugh, whatever. I don't even need them to go with me. Shh, come here. And I'm going to let you in on a secret. I can go to the ski resort by myself and have way more fun. But how, you ask? It's called lucid dreaming. I first heard about it through the biggest buzz movie, Inception, and realized that I've had experienced the same things before. Since then, I've become an expert at this. So before I go to bed, I just have to write a script saying where I want to go, with whom, what I want to do, and three, two, one. I'm asleep and living my best life. In fact, I could say that those beautiful self-designed dreams are like meditation to me. Because... To be honest, my real life is tedious. No matter how hard I tried, I was no match for my younger half-sister, Christine. In my dad and grandma's eyes, a child of a doctor in physics, as well as a grandchild of a history professor, should automatically be a walking encyclopedia or something. But unfortunately, I didn't excel at the academic side of life. They treat Christine like this precious gemstone and me like some boring old rock. Every week usually entails her getting excellent grades or winning some reward, and all of my family lavishing her with gifts and praise, while I'm treated like an outsider in my own family. Ugh! Just thinking about it makes me want to scream. So, they want me to stay home and concentrate on tomorrow's test, huh? Nah, you wish. So, instead, I grabbed my pen and started writing tonight's awesome dream script. Let's see. That's right. The obnoxious Roger dared to heartlessly throw the candy I gave him in the trash, even though he'd been flirting with me. What a jerk. I will definitely retaliate against him tonight. Lying in bed, I closed my eyes and repeated this sentence. I'm going to kick him out of my life. And you won't believe it. In the dream, he kept chasing me like crazy, but I totally blanked him. (laughs) Helen, wake up. Time's running out. My best friend Gabby kicked my chair and I jolted awake. Oh no, there were only five minutes left. I frantically ticked on the paper and hurriedly submitted it to the monitor. Hey, did you not get any sleep or something? Well, I stayed up late writing the script for my dream. It was worth it as I got payback on Roger. What if you get a bad grade? Never mind. I'll be fine when I come home tonight with an A-plus dream. (laughs) But things turned out not to be as simple as I thought. That afternoon when I arrived home, I was about to sneak up to my bedroom to write my next amazing script when someone grabbed my bag strap and pulled me back. It was grandma and dad, and both of them seemed to be mad. How long are you going to live like this? Education is important to this family, yet you don't seem to care. Do you realize this week alone your teacher has contacted me three times? But dad, I really don't like those boring subjects. I only like no more drawing or writing your silly stories. You need to focus on your studies, else you'll end up a useless person like... She suddenly stopped, which made me curious. Like who? But neither she nor my dad said anything. They just quietly walked away, leaving me alone. Honestly, I never wanted to disappoint them that much. So this time I was going to try my best to not let them down. Dad! Grandma! Look, look! I got a B plus in my math test. No one cared what I said. My stepmom cuddled Christine and looked at her with sparkling eyes. My wonderful daughter, I know the top student award is just a piece of cake to you, unlike someone else. Then she turned to me and tutted, Helen, please, you're making a show of yourself. That's embarrassing. My face fell and I forced back tears. But I tried so hard to get this grade. A B-plus is nothing to be proud of. I chucked my exam paper in the trash, then stormed up to my room. It didn't matter what I did or how hard I tried, this household would always treat me like a loser. Dream on, Helen. Go back to your happy place. 
In front of me was the crimson sunset sky. I'd been scripting this moment for so long, lounging lazily on the beach without anyone complaining. But suddenly the sky darkened, and the inky clouds seemed intent on swallowing me. Huh? What was going on? This wasn't a part of the script. Terrified, I ran into a forest, but it was so dark and spooky here, and I tripped over a branch and fell Ouch! As I rubbed my ankle and started crying my eyes out, suddenly a strange woman appeared. She took me into a wooden house at the end of the forest and gently helped bandage me up. This woman, well, she didn't scare me at all. Instead, I felt warm around her. Curious, I tried to take a closer look at her face, but then I suddenly woke up and realized tears were rolling down my cheeks. What a strange dream. I immediately drew all the things I'd seen. That forest, that house but strangely, I couldn't remember that woman's face. Why are you drawing all this nonsense? My dad snatched the sketch from my hand and looked at it frowning. It appeared in my dream and... Get rid of them all. From now on, if I see you wasting your time on these stupid drawings again, there will be consequences. This was too much. I couldn't live without drawing. It was the only thing keeping me sane. I had to get out of here. Live my way. Forget them and their stupid standards. I would create my own world. I planted myself in Gabby's room, and this is where I've been for almost a week. Luckily, Gabby's parents are totally chill with me staying. As for my family, they haven't messaged me once. And yes, dreams do go on. But now I dreaded going to sleep as my lucid dreams were still all messed up. Sometimes beautiful, sometimes bad. And for the most part, it did not turn out the way I wanted it to anymore until one day that creepy forest appeared again. No matter how much I screamed to wake myself up, I still couldn't get out of that nightmare. Panicked, I kept running and running in the hope of finding a safe place till I saw that woman. And once again, she reached out her hand to help me. This time, I wouldn't miss my chance. I looked carefully at her face, remembering every detail, and as soon as I woke up, I drew her. Wow, I didn't know you watched this kind of show. (laughs) Gabby giggled. What show? Look, she's a celebrity. She hosts some TV show that my mom watches sometimes. So, that woman is a real person? If so, I have to find her. I didn't really know what was going on, only that there was something tying me to this woman and I needed to figure this out. Luckily, Gabby has an uncle who works at the studio and he gave us special passes to meet this host in the flesh. When the cameras stopped filming, she turned and saw me, and her eyes widened in alarm. Helen? Helen, is it really you? Then she rushed over and hugged me. Huh? What did she just say? We didn't know each other, and... The weird thing is, this hug didn't feel strange at all. Instead, I felt the same warmth as when she'd taken care of me in my dream. As she loosened her embrace on me and gave me this beaming smile, I said... Um, and you are? Darling, it's me, your mother. That's when I realized something. Of course she was my mom. Look, we had the same eyes. Needless to say, this was a huge shock. We hugged each other for a long time in tears. Then mom took me backstage, got me a glass of water. Then she told me everything. So after I was born, mom once got caught up in a cheating scandal. Dad was angry about the damage this would do to his career, so he kicked her out of the house and wouldn't let her see me. A long time later, she found out that Grandma was behind everything, just because she didn't approve of this marriage, so she came up with that plan. But why didn't you ever try to find me when you've always been living this close? Oh, no, sweetie. I've always kept an eye on you. One time, years ago, I saw you playing in the park. You had your hair and pigtails and... uh, I tried to approach you, but your dad threatened me. He is a very powerful man who's actually capable of destroying my life. And I didn't think it was fair to drag you through all of that. But things have changed now. I'll never leave you alone, ever again. I strolled into the house like normal, and everyone stopped what they were doing and glared at me with disgust. Oh... You're back. If you're not prepared to study properly, then don't bother staying. I took a deep breath, then said, You can't treat me like this anymore. I try my best, and it's not fair that you punish me for just being me. So I'm leaving, and I'm never coming back. 
Where will you go? That's when mom walked in. Oh God, you should have seen the looks on their faces. Grandma actually looked like she'd swallowed a swarm of wasps. I stood by and let you manipulate and control me well no more. I'm taking my daughter and we're going to have the life we both deserve. Then, ignoring their angry words, she grabbed my arm and led me out of there. So that's the moment when I left home and moved in with my mom. Now I draw as much as I want. In fact, mom's letting me create a mural on the living room wall. It's going to be epic when it's finished. Oh, and about the lucid dreams, I don't write scripts anymore. Instead, I realize that I'm better off focusing on my reality and making myself the best version of myself I can be. After all, as great as a dream world can be, it's nowhere near as good as experiencing life firsthand.